Introducing the DePew High School Class of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you all please rise and direct your attention to the screen, and please welcome the Depew High School Concert Choir, who will sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the Spangled banner yet wave. 
Superintendent Raby, Assistant Principal Skichillis, members of the Board of Education, faculty, parents, relatives, and the graduating class of 2020. My name is Carol Townsend, and as principal, it is an honor to welcome you to this very unique and special occasion. This evening, we have come together for the 119th commencement of Dubuque High School. There has been no other graduation that will stand out since the first graduating class in 1901. This evening, we celebrate the class of 2020 who will join the many graduates who have helped to build the traditions and pride of the Dubuque School District. At this time, I would like to recognize some key individuals in the district that have contributed to the high standards and quality educational program that our students receive. Starting with Dr. Jeffrey Raby, Superintendent. Assistant Superintendent, Mrs. Susan Fry. Assistant Principal and Director of Athletics, Mr. Robert Skichillis. Assistant Principal, Mrs. Jill Swishka. Members of our Board of Education, President, Mr. David Schell. Vice President, Mr. John Spencer. Trustees, Mr. Todd Bush, Mrs. Amy Duty, Mr. Patrick Law, Mrs. Donna Campanos, Mr. Justin Young. I would also like to recognize the class of 2020 advisors, Mrs. Gina Zelzikowski and Mrs. Jennifer Corden. The senior class officers, President Jillian Ciccone, Vice President Kylie Cochran, Secretary Avery Hips, Treasurer Olivia Thornton, Sergeant in Arms Riley Rogowski, Student Senate Advisor Mrs. Kelly Jeffords, Student Senate President Marcy Anna Cardona, Vice President Chloe Kowal, Secretary Mitchell Vanelli, Treasurer Sarah Raleigh. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Raby, who will address the class of 2020. Good evening, graduates, parents, guests, teachers, administrators, and members of the Board of Education. Well, did you ever think this time would finally come? I'm actually talking to the parents, not the graduates right now, you, the parents, and key adults in the lives of these accomplished graduates have played such a critical role in the success of each and every one of them. Each of you have ushered them along the way to get to this important point in their life. In fact, graduates, let's take this opportunity to create a special memory and thank your families for their love and support and everything they have done for each of you. So if each of you could please turn to your families and join me in giving them a signal of appreciation by honking your horns until I raise my hand. Graduates, if you think about it for a moment, the day that your parents waited at the bus stop with you on the first day of kindergarten, they dreamed of this day, and at some point during your school career, you embraced this dream and this day as well. At some point, you wanted the same thing, to be here, to walk with pride across this stage and receive your diploma. Although the experience wasn't exactly like we all dreamed of and prayed for, we were able to simulate it as best as we could. Well, the event has arrived and the purpose of tonight, your virtual graduation ceremony is to celebrate, reflect, and have an opportunity to look to the future. And with that, let's discuss for a moment where you have been and where you are, are going. A few weeks ago, you picked up your caps and gowns at the high school. You were able to drive by your former teachers as they parked along the service road, and at the same time, reflect on the times that you spent in each of the school buildings and their classrooms. This event was a modification of our traditional graduate law, but it is important to understand that this is not the end of a story, but just the beginning. The Chinese use two brush strokes to write the word crisis. One stroke stands for danger, the other for opportunity. In a crisis, be aware of the danger, but recognize the opportunity. These words were actually spoken by John F. Kennedy in April of 1959. As I wrote this speech, the then Senator John F. Kennedy's quote resonated with me as I reflected on the impact that the global COVID-19 pandemic had on the Depew School community and specifically on your senior year. This quote was from a speech that Senator Kennedy was delivering at the convocation of the United Negro College Fund in Indianapolis, Indiana, April 12, 1959. His intent was to promote the, the young minds in attendance and to persevere through the multitude of crises that were unfolding all over the world. He prefaced this famous quote in his remarks 
With it is necessary, therefore, that we discuss our educational problems in the context of the demands for American leadership in world affairs, for American contributions to peace, for American assistance in the undeveloped nations of the world, and for American strength in the face of harsh threats from around the world. I am confident that as you listen on, you will also reflect upon these words from the past and see how they will resonate with you as you consider our collective response to the present state of affairs. If you recall, on or about January 17, 2020, the first two cases of COVID-19 were realized within the United States in Washington State and Chicago. As New York State began implementing measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19, we were vigilant in the potential danger this virus could pose to our school community and began to develop contingency plans. Advanced just two short months and on March 16th, Governor Cuomo issued an executive order closing all schools across the state. As the total number of COVID-19 cases rose to 950 with seven deaths, included with the executive order, the governor suspended the 180-day instructional requirement for schools and instructed school districts to develop a plan for continuity of instruction along with a meal plan and child care for the essential workforce. In order to be able to serve the children and families within our community, DePew schools engaged in emergency planning and deploying the necessary resources where they were needed. Since March 16, our, response, our responses have significantly evolved by our food service department immediately beginning to offer breakfast and lunches to district students. And as of Friday, June 26, they served approximately 93,000 meals. Being a one-to-one -one school district for almost five years now, with every student having an assigned device and our teachers being highly trained in a variety of technology platforms, we were able to quickly pivot to remote learning and continue to improve practices over time to better connect with students. The district collaborated with the YMCA of Lancaster and set up childcare for the essential workforce within the Hugo Heights Elementary School, serving approximately 15 to 20 students daily. In addition to providing these three essential functions as a school district, the caring faculty and staff became very creative in order to maintain and build remote connections with each of you, our seniors. They designed and delivered Class of 2020 lawn signs in each of, to each of your houses. We, we organized the students of our sophomore class to send positive message postcards to each of you and facilitated portrait, portraits of each of you and displayed them in front of your high school. I think you would agree, yes, as a community, we have been faced with a global crisis, but yes, we have been continually pivoting, being creative and identifying every single opportunity that we could in order to be able to stay connected and remotely engaged with each of you and your families. I wanna thank all the DePue teachers, staff and administrators, as well as our students and families who have worked to make the most of the situation and for participating in this special event tonight. The lessons that we have been exposed to this year have been more than we could have imagined, even more than you could have received perhaps being physically in school. And these lessons are continuing beyond the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. As I continue to be overwhelmed with sadness, astonished by outrageous violent behaviors, disappointed by various reactions, and simply at my tolerance limit of watching these events continually unfold in the media, I have to exclaim enough, enough inequity, enough pain, enough violence, enough racism, enough oppression, enough perpetuation of privilege at the expense of others. I am before you with the overwhelming feelings of sadness and dismay following the actions that led to and then followed the death of George Floyd, including what has been unfolding in the Western New York region. Speaking with others from across our school community, I know that these feelings are widely shared. First, we owe you, our children, more. We must lead the way to facilitate change that will create lasting equity for all people in our school community. And I charge each of you with being those leaders of our future. Second, we must be committed to promoting the improvement of practices to provide inclusive, equitable environments free from hatred and racism. Finally, as Dr. Joy DeGru said, no one is born racist. It is modeled, learned, and passed along through generations where it poisons and paralyzes its victims and corrupts its perpetuators. If we are to eradicate this persistent evil, we must see its structural and institutional roots. And with swift and collective action, hold those that govern and that are governed accountable for its elimination. The violent and oppressive events highlighted in the media in recent days and weeks 
that we have all witnessed have underscored the importance of equity and inclusion efforts. It is imperative that we find ways to engage in constant self-reflection, encourage constructive conversations, and make changes to our current practices. We must engage with one another. Really listen, I mean really listen, and collaboratively design learning environments that will be liberating for all. It is challenging to connect and provide emotional support while we are not together physically and required to social distance. But collectively, we need to work hard to provide support to one another, and that movement can start with each and every one of you. Though we are proud of and often celebrate our diversity, we will continue to ask for your leadership as you begin your next phases of life. Where all, we, where all feel welcomed and loved. The future change that we all need to see in society begins here with our DePew family, where we educate our leaders of tomorrow. I want all of our students, staff, and families to know that each of you are important. We care, we care and are here for you through these challenging times. I am not sure how many of you know this, but in 1967, there was another time of protest in Buffalo. It was one of over 159 protests across the United States at that time. It lasted from June 26th through July 1st. I was just three days old. Over 40 people were injured during this time, and on November 10th, 1967, Dr. Martin Luther King visited Buffalo, and in a speech titled, The Future of Integration, held at Klein Hands Music Hall, before about 2,500 people, he proclaimed, we are moving toward the day when we will judge a man by his character and ability instead of by the color of his skin. Here we are 53 years later, and now it will take your leadership, your motivation, your love for one another to continue and accelerate that movement. I have every confidence in this group of individuals as you have clearly have had the level of perseverance to overcome any adversity that has been put in front of you so far. And as a testament of your perseverance, you are about to receive a New York State High School diploma, one of the most rigorous and sought after diplomas in the United States, if not the world. The standards that you were able to achieve in your 13 years have more than adequately prepared you for your future. These high standards represent the core of what all people should know, understand, and be able to do as responsible citizens in this global society. The world-class educators that you have been afforded in the DePue Union Free School District have delivered an intellectually powerful ed education to you, and now it is up to you to advance your learning. Once again, I would like to thank you for the privilege of addressing you tonight, of being a part of your future, and wish each of you all of the best in pursuing your goals and living life to the fullest potential. Above all, strive to be happy and love one another. It is time for each of you to start your journey, embrace your failures, and bask in the glory of your successes. And always remember, once a wildcat, always a wildcat, and don't you forget it. Good night. I am honored to introduce our next two speakers. These two students represent this class by their scholar and outstanding character. In addition, they both possess a passion and respect for learning that has resulted in this honor today. Mr. Mason Liss, our class valedictorian, who will be followed by Mr. Adam Stuber, our class salutatorian. Well, this wasn't supposed to be how it ended. We were supposed to go out on top and have this be one of the best years of our lives. We we're looking forward to prom, follies, yearbook signing, the senior picnic, and even the bell ring at 2.20 on the last day of school. Unfortunately, these, experience, these are experiences that we won't be able to have anymore. However, is this actually the end of high school? Yes, but this is only the start of the rest of our lives, where many more amazing things are to come. Obviously, I'm going to miss all the little things in high school, like the cafeteria chaos, Friday night football games, dress-up days, and just the constant liveliness of the school. But we now have so much more to look forward to. Some people will be going into the workforce, some to the military, some to the university, and others to the many opportunities we have after graduation that allow us to follow our dreams. Even though we are missing out on many of our lasts, we also have many more firsts, like the first time living on your own, the first time you have to manage your own money, and the first time you have, to, you have complete control and freedom over your life. Our lives are about to change, and we are the ones that can steer it in any direction we want. Despite not being able to finish the last semester of high school, 
The other seven semesters that we did complete provided us with many valuable lessons and skills that will help us in the future. Whether it be managing your time, working with a group, learning your own strengths and weaknesses, and being able to critically think and problem solve, these are very important for everyone to be able to do. But I believe the most important lesson learned in high school is how to push through something even when times are getting tough. Everyone has goals that they set and want to reach. In order to reach these goals, there are going to be obstacles that you encounter that can set you back or slow you down. No matter how difficult these obstacles are to overcome, you can't give up if you want to reach your goals. However, many of these obstacles that you run into may require you to sacrifice something in order to gain another. For example, in order to get into your dream college, you may need to give up some free time in order to study for the SAT or spend some extra time after class to boost your grades. Now that we're out of high school, this may not seem to apply to us, but let me put this into the real world. With the current coronavirus pandemic, which is much of the reason that our lives have been changed over the last few months, we all have one common goal. We want to be able to get rid of the virus and return to our normal lives healthy and happy. Getting in the way of returning to normal is the spread of the virus and the danger that it poses to a large portion of the population. With this pandemic, we are sacrificing our ability to freely move around our community and interact with the people within it. It may not be something that we want to do, but it is something that we must do in order to reach our final goal. These last four years have been something that we will never be able to experience again. I want to thank all of you for making it so memorable. You've been given the tools we need to be successful and achieve our goals. We are the class of 2020, and we can change the world. When I started high school, I was intimidated by my new surroundings. I remember my mother and I walking the hallways a few days before the school started, just so I could find all my classes and feel more confident in this new world where I'll be spending the next four years of my life. At first, the hallways felt like a foreign labyrinth. In the blink of an eye, they seemed small and homelike as I walked them unknowingly for the last time. While this year ended unexpectedly, I believe it brings to light a valuable lesson. Live for the moment. We spent the majority of our senior year looking forward to prom and all the events that sadly never came, instead of cherishing every moment we spent with our friends and family. We were always looking forward instead of valuing what was all around us while we had it. If this quarantine has taught me anything, it's not to live for the future, but to live for every second. People are wired to compete in practically all aspects of life, academics, sports, social media followers, annual income, and throughout high school, I've compared myself to others, but that was a mistake. I've realized that these comparisons are futile if they don't compel you to work harder to improve yourself, because in reality, you are only in competition with yourself, with the goals of becoming a person who you respect and who you value. So where do we go from here? We've achieved the biggest and most demanding goal we've ever attempted. 12 years in the making, and we finally walked the stage and threw our caps in the air, at staggered times, of course. Well, the next step is entirely up to us. This is the moment where we choose our own future to begin to make individual impacts on the world. Millions of choices to make, and we have the absolute freedom to follow our passions. Once we pull out of this parking lot, we will all go our separate ways. But one thing will always connect us, our resilience while facing everything 2020 has thrown at us. We've lived through history together. We are the children born in the year of 9-11. Most recently, we're living among murder hornets, riots, hurricanes, a global pandemic. Yet we're still here. Suddenly, the future doesn't seem as scary and overwhelming as it once did. What more is there to face that we haven't already conquered? Taxes? Now, it's time for us to begin building our legacy. I don't just mean endlessly grinding to achieve fame or earn a million dollars, but to truly leave a lasting impression on every single person that we meet. Because in a few years, we will not remember the number of likes our classmates' Instagram posts received, but we will remember our interactions with them. We will remember how they made us feel and what type of person they were. Strive to be the person who leaves others with a bit more joy hope in your life, and your legacy will create itself. So to the class of 2020, these past four years have been a ride. So to every senior, I thank you, and I wish you the very, very best.
Next, I would like to introduce to you Mrs. Heather Lovelace and the DePew High School Concert Choir, who will perform a choral tribute to the class of 2020. to watch the performance 
instead of attending classes. As I watch many of you perform on the stage, I now see a parallel between the storyline and how you and I ended our time here at Depew High School and the many lessons that we've learned since. The lead character, Dorothy, who lived in Kansas with her aunt and uncle, represents life as we knew it. The security of our home here at Depew High School, surrounded by caring teachers, friends, and activities that we may have taken for granted. Then the tornado hit, the pandemic, and all of a sudden we found ourselves in the land of Oz. Etched in your minds forever will be the phrase, stay at home, save lives. Then life changed like we've never experienced before. Weddings were canceled. There were funerals without mourners. Empty stadiums, proms, and traditional graduation ceremonies canceled all across the land, which is why we find ourselves here tonight. Dorothy found herself in the land of Oz where everything seemed so unusual. There were munchkins and good and evil witches and a whole new set of customs. Just as we have today, a whole new set of rules. Social distancing, wearing masks, staying home. Dorothy soon realized that she wanted nothing more but to go back to her old life. She followed the Yellow Brick Road hoping the wizard would direct her. Today, I think of Dr. Fauci and his advice on how to overcome the challenges of the pandemic. But along her path, Dorothy was befriended by a lion, a tin man, and a scarecrow. They can be credited with helping her to see differently and made her journey a success. I'm reminded of the efforts and support provided to us by the selfless first responders in the hospitals and the teachers who had to convert their practice overnight to remote teaching. Just as Dorothy and her friends worked through to find the answers they were seeking, we will together overcome these challenging times that we face. As you continue on your journey, you will work cooperatively, rely on friends, and stay true to your path. The Dubuque High School class of 2020 is like no other. You have had a far different experience than any other class. You've had to garner courage, resilience, and strength to get through your senior year. You had to face many great unknowns, and yes, disappointment. I've learned through the years that disappointment is a part of life, but it's how you deal with disappointment that makes all the difference in the outcome. I wanted nothing more but to end my 39-year career by personally handing you your diploma and celebrating in our traditional ceremony. I also wanted closure, which helps us to go on and to move forward. If you look back at the scarecrow and his desire to have a brain, he started out full of dismay, but it wasn't until long till he found a goal to pursue and the bright side of things. He represents how you can take a lousy situation and turn it into something. We also had to learn this. How nice was it when your loved ones who supported you for 13 years were able to hand you your diplomas? How nice was it that your, when your teachers paraded around town to show you how much they care? No other class was honored with portrait signs in front of the school. How special was it to bond with your families while in quarantine? Well, hopefully that was special. The scarecrow also represents how valuable education is and how badly you wanted a brain. Today, you will receive your diploma in recognition of your commitment to academic pursuits. But it is my hope that you understand that you will need all of these traits combined together while on your journey. They will help you to achieve your goals and your dreams. In closing, over the last four years, we've pushed you to, to do your best and encouraged you to challenge yourself. Your yellow brick road will be paved in some obstacles as Dorothy experienced. If you stay on the path and continue to exercise your resilience and persistence, you will succeed. Remember to use your brain, but refer to your heart for the answers in life. You know there are no wizards to make it easy, but there will be good teachers who will come in many forms, and they will impart the wisdom that you will need every step of the way. You only have to recognize them. And finally, what about rainbows? Somewhere over the rainbow represents the dreams that are yet to be fulfilled. You need to continue to dream because dreams are what drive people to achieve their goals. So as you leave the Emerald City of Depew, we wish for you that your life will be filled with rainbows and that your yellow brick road will carry you wherever you choose to go. 
Please know that it has been an honor to work with you. I congratulate each and every one of you, and may your journey be blessed along the way. Thank you, and remember, once a long cap, always long. Our next speaker this evening is the class president, Ms. Jillian Saccone. Jillian has emerged as a strong student leader in some of the most difficult conditions. No other class president has had to lead their class from afar. Jillian, we thank you for your hard work and a great job. At first, I was very nervous about reciting this speech in front of my entire class along with their families and friends. However, never in a million years did I think I would be practically alone in an auditorium talking to a camera. As I look around this empty auditorium, I wish you were all here with me to celebrate our graduate graduation as it should be. I wish I could feel the butterflies in my stomach just as I'm about to walk up to the podium. I miss you all so much. I wish that things could have been different for us because we deserve it. The DePue class of 2020 is special and we stand above the rest in a special way. The last 13 years have been filled with laughs, cries, dances, songs, and most importantly, memories. I'd like to take some time to relive these memories so we can take them with us wherever we may go. Kindergarten, our first time in a big school. We had on backpacks that were too big for us, filled with crayon boxes and notebooks, and had no idea what to expect. We sat down at, at our color tables and were shy at first, but eventually figured out that the people around us were people that we could befriend. We soon came very close with these friends, many of which would be lifelong friends. We got to experience our first snack time, end of the day playground adventures, and our first Halloween parade, where we walked the track to show off our costumes. We got to sing our hearts out in the kindergarten concert, belting about days of the week, months of the year, and who stole the cookie from the cookie jar. It seemed as if we were invincible and nothing could stop us. If someone were to ask us what we wanted to be when we grew up, we would have said a princess, an astronaut, or even a cowboy. There was nothing that could get in the way of a girl and her tiara. Fifth grade. Fast forward a few years, and we've already grown so much. We've made even more friends and become closer with the ones we started off with. We even had slumber parties and watched movies and laughed with our best friends. By now, we started our exciting and intense multiplication tournaments using our fingers to figure out what nine times eight is. We got to start playing an instrument of choice in band and got to sing our hearts out in chorus. We had our fair share of birthday parties, going around to teachers' classrooms, giving them cupcakes or cookie cake. We even got to watch the Polar Express in the multi-purpose room with our pajamas and blankets, while Santa put on a present on our chairs for when the movie was over. We participated in spelling bees, made artwork for our parents to hang on their walls, participated in the science fair. If someone asked us what we wanted to be when we grew up then, our answers might have changed. A doctor, a firefighter, a soldier. Our mindsets had to change because our lives were about to change. Middle school was soon upon us. Sixth grade, we were scared, anxious, didn't know what was in store for us. However, along with the nerves came opportunity. Our first look at what DePew sports are all about, whether it be basketball or tennis or lacrosse. We were finally able to participate in class office and take part in various clubs. It was a whole new world compared to Kiuga, and the class of 2020 was ready to tackle it. We experienced our first Spirit Week pep assemblies and were able to go to Friday night football games with friends. We took part in band and chorus concerts and signed up for the talent show. So many reasons for us to get involved, so many reasons for us to be excited. Eighth grade, our last year of middle school. Two years filled with happiness, stress, laughter, and work. Work that got us ready for high school. We had to say goodbye to some of the most amazing teachers that brought us up and made us who we are today. It was time for us to be big kids and to get ready for the last four years of our journey. Our lives again were about to change forever. Ninth grade, our first year of high school. We were anxious to walk in those doors, but excited to start another chapter in our lives. Our first high school spirit week completely different than middle schools. Our first glance into JV and varsity sports. It was time for us to find ourselves and find new things to try. We got to participate in our Follies week, dressing up for a week and becoming together to have the most fun in the assembly. Our first time watching the senior boys dance and sing on the stage during Mr. DePue. Our first marching band trip to New York City, where we watched The Lion King on Broadway in awe. The opportunities were endless. We could do whatever we set our mind to. 
class of 2020 knew they were going to leave their mark on Q. If a teacher or classmate were to ask us now what we wanted to be, it may have been harder for us to answer as we would need to start giving serious thoughts. This was our time to shine, our time to stand out. Junior year, only two more years left. Colleges started to email us asking us for a tour around their campus. Most of us got our licenses, being able to drive ourselves to school instead of taking the bus. The future was near and we had to start thinking of what our next step was. Along with college thoughts came months of pure joy. Hunger Games tournaments where we couldn't walk the halls without being scared. Field trips to seek to kill a mockingbird with Mr. Endress. Endress. Trips to the planetarium with Mr. Caban. Countless cuddles with Sandy, Calloway, Holly, and Oscar. Unforgettable laughs in the cafeteria with friends, along with breakfasts to celebrate those who made the honor roll. Junior year was just another step in us becoming brilliant students. Senior year, the year we longed to reach Everson's kindergarten, our last first, the beginning of the end, our last first day, our last homecoming week, being able to decorate our cars for the motorcade, football and cheerleading senior nights, being able to celebrate our last games with our families, our last holiday band and chorus concert. There were countless things to look forward to, our year to shine, to be on top. Just as things couldn't get better, the coronavirus shut down the entire state. We can all remember our last day at Dickey High School. The music department put on The Wizard of Oz as gatherings of multiple people were not allowed at the time. It was a chance for students to show their classmates all the hard work they put into making this amazing production. At this point, we as seniors didn't know what was going to happen. If we were going to go back when we could come pick up our belongings. Nothing could have prepared us for this. The class of 2020 had their last day of school without even knowing it. There were so many things we still had to do, so many things we had to accomplish. We never thought we would lose an entire season of softball, lacrosse, and track. We never thought we would, wouldn't be able to walk the halls of Cleaver to show off our caps and gowns. We never thought we would, be, we would lose a trip with the marching band. We never thought we would lose a senior prom. We were at a complete loss and could do absolutely nothing about it. Most importantly, we were losing time to be together as a class. Precious time to enjoy our last year together. This time we will never get back and it truly is heartbreaking. However, this small loss of time with each other doesn't even come close to the memories we've made as a class over the years. I have never been more proud to be a part of something in my entire life than I am to be a part of this class. A class so special, overcoming every obstacle thrown at us. This shouldn't be remembered as a time of sadness, rather a time of reminiscing on all the good we were lucky enough to have. The class of 2020 needs to thank those that helped to, that helped to get us to where we are now. To the teachers, coaches, counselors, advisors, the school board, and all the staff that make Depew as amazing as it is, we will forever be grateful for your knowledge and support along the way. Though we could not have our proper goodbyes and thank yous, please know you are appreciated and we truly could not have done this without you. To our parents, siblings, grandparents, and families, thank you for believing in us, being our biggest supporters, and most importantly, for loving us unconditionally. You are the ones who have molded us into the amazing people we have become. We love you and appreciate you. Each and every one of us have talents and qualities that make us who we are. These qualities are what have made the class of 2020 one of a kind. Today, if a teacher or classmate were to ask what we wanted to do when we grew up, we can finally give a strong and confident answer as we've had so much time to prepare for this moment. A nurse, an engineer, a forensic scientist. As we go our separate ways, we should take DHS with us. We should remember how strong we have become, persevering through a time like this. Though we were apart, we will always be one class, the class of 2020, and I believe that we are extraordinary. So be extraordinary and live your life to the fullest. The late Jimi Hendrix once said, the story of life is quicker than the blink of an eye. The story of love is hello and goodbye. Until we meet again, thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce Mrs. Katie Nelshevsky, who will announce the names of the recipients of the Memorial Scholarship Award. For over 30 years, Henry Barron taught social studies here at DePew High School. Mr. Barron was a gentleman and an exuberant scholar who taught that knowledge without use is useless. 
that citizenship is not a concept but a practice, and that participation is 100% all the time. Above all, life is to be lived. The Social Studies Department takes great pride in presenting the Henry Barron Memorial Scholarship to a graduating senior who has not only demonstrated outstanding achievement in social studies, but who has demonstrated the values and ideals that Mr. Barron attempted to develop in his students. The recipient will be in the Physical Therapy Program at Damon College in the fall. Congratulations to Taylor Keith. The S.J. Casada Humanitarian Award is presented to a member of the senior class who through school and community service, a positive attitude, and a genuine love of the whole community has made Depew a better place. This scholarship is presented in memory of Sam J. Casada, a former business teacher and yearbook advisor at Depew High School. The recipient of this award will be studying childhood and special education in the honors program at Damon College. Congratulations to Marciana Cardona. The James M. Greco Memorial Scholarship is presented to two members of the graduating class who have an interest in pursuing a career in criminal justice. This scholarship is presented in memory of the late James Greco, class of 1983, who attended Erie Community College and received an associate's degree in criminal justice. He was a correctional officer and a police officer with the town of Lancaster. Both recipients will be majoring in criminal justice, law enforcement, at Erie Community College this fall. Congratulations to Andres Pick and Justin Riederer. The Rosemary Stocklosa Memorial Scholarship was established by Mr. and Mrs. Stocklosa in memory of their daughter, Rose, a graduate of the class of 2003, who was a very energetic, artistic, musical, athletic, and academically focused young lady. This scholarship is awarded to two seniors who have drive and determination to take on life's challenges. Both recipients are attending college in the fall to study nursing. Our first recipient will be in the honors program at Damon College. Congratulations to Mitchell Vanelli. Our second recipient will be at Niagara University. Congratulations to Jillian Sacconi. The Norma Beersdell Patterson Memorial Scholarship was established by Joe Patterson in memory of his wife, Norma, a graduate of the class of 1964. Norma earned degrees in library science and student personnel in higher education. She worked as a librarian and was a member of the Friends of the Lancaster Library, where she was an officer. This scholarship is awarded to a member of the graduating class who will be preparing for a career in education. This year's recipient... Marciana Cardona. The Depew Teachers Organization annually awards three $500 scholarships to seniors. The first scholarship is the Scholar Athlete Award. This award honors the student who most exemplifies strength of character, dedication, and sportsmanship while maintaining noteworthy academic achievement. Congratulations to Jersey Phillips. The second scholarship is the Academic Attitude Award. This award honors the student who has pursued the love of learning with perseverance, commitment, and integrity. Congratulations to Mitchell Vanelli. The last scholarship is the Service Award. This award honors the student whose efforts exemplify unselfish and inexhaustible dedication to the school and community. Congratulations to Marciana Cardona. Now for the presentation of the diplomas. On behalf of the Board of Education and the Depew Union Free School District and upon the authority vested in me by the State of New York, I do hereby confer the secondary school diploma upon the qualified members of the class of 2020. As a principal representing the faculty and staff of DePew High School, I do certify the satisfactory completion of the secondary course of study as set forth by the State of New York and by the Board of Education and the DePew Union Free School District. It is with great pleasure that I present for the awarding of the diploma the qualified members of the class of 2020. Mike Alberti, Regents Diploma. Dylan K. 
Kenneth Angieski, Advanced Regents Diploma. Tells Advanced Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Regents Diploma. Donata Piscato, Regents Diploma. <laughs> Kelly Blackowitz, Skills and Achievement Commencement Credential, Regents Diploma. Bosworth, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. <laughs> Michaela Buchkowski, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Bozinski, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career and Development in Occupational Studies, Career and Technical Education. P.J. Burns, Regents Diploma. Marciana Cardona, Advanced Regents with Honors, Mastery in Math and Science.
Madison Catalano, Advanced Regents Diploma. Kenny Che, Regents Diploma. Kurt Shimaga, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career in Technical Education, National Technical Honor Society. Colin Colburn, Advanced Regents Diploma. Kylie Cochran, Advanced Regents Diploma. Brandon Coleman, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. <laughs> Ashley Collins, Regents Diploma. Devin Conley, Advanced Regents Diploma. <laughs> Tyler Connors, Advanced Regents Diploma. Antonio James Cueva, Advanced Regents with Honors. Justin Swiglinski, Advanced Regents with Honors, Mastery in Science. Kirsten Davy, Advanced Regents Diploma. Ethan Deer, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education, National Technical Honor Society. Christopher Delano, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education.
Alex Elsesser, Advanced Regents Diploma. Joshua Falter, Advanced Regents Diploma. Holden Patrick Fleming, Regents Diploma. Helena Love Guerra, Regents Diploma. Gaskell, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Good job. Dean Godius, Advanced Regents Diploma. William Good, Regents Diploma. <laughs> Samuel Grant, Advanced Regents Diploma, Mastery in Science. Justine Graves, Regents Diploma. Isaiah Hancock, Advanced Regents Diploma. <laughs> Dylan Anaszewski, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Ian Edward Hurst, Advanced Regents Diploma. Avery Hibbs, Advanced Regents Diploma. <laughs> Trey Herner, Regents Diploma.
Lexi Ignaziak, Advanced Regents Diploma. Zachary Jendrzejczyk, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. <laughs> James Jerozel, Advanced Regents with Honors, Master in Math and Science. Cole Kaminsky, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Yay! Emily Rose Kasperzak, Advanced Regents Diploma. Jenna Kavanaugh, Regents Diploma. <laughs> Taylor Keith, Advanced Regents Diploma, Masters in Math. Josh Kennedy, Regents Diploma. <laughs> Maysoon Khalil, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career Technical Education. Nathan Knight, Advanced Regents Diploma. Anna Kester, Regents Diploma. Carson Cole, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Elizabeth Katowski, Regents Diploma. Chloe Kowalik, Advanced Regents Diploma.
Brittany Krajewski, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Nathan Coolish, Regents Diploma. Juliana Labruna, Advanced Regents Diploma. <laughs> Olivia LaPresse, Regents Diploma. Mia Joy Lathrop, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. <laughs> Luke Lehman, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Jack Lubchick, Advanced Regents with Honors, Master in Math and Science. <laughs> Mason Liss, Advanced Regents with Honors, Career in Technical Education, Mastery in Science and Math. Justin Lozo, Advanced Regents Diploma. <laughs> Matthew Motempio, Career and Technical Education. Devon Marsh, Regents Diploma. <laughs> Brianna Haley Marker, Advanced Regents Diploma. Jonathan Lawrence Markowski, Advanced Regents Diploma.
Hunter McKay, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Kara Mandola, Advanced Regents Diploma. <laughs> Zach Benati, Regents Diploma. Aiden Monin, Regents Diploma. <laughs> Selena Morales, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Bailey Mosco, Advanced Regents Diploma. Ajir Mukbel, Regents Diploma. Sharissa Mutter, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. <laughs> Beverly Nash, Skills and Achievement Commencement Credential, Regents Diploma. Cody Negridge, Regents Diploma. Christian Nickel, Regents Diploma. Brianna Nozzle, Advanced Regents Diploma. Charles Nunz, Advanced Regents Diploma. Jillian Alexi, Regents Diploma. <laughs> 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 
Mackenzie Rose Alexi, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Paul Samuel Otara, Advanced Regents Diploma. <laughs> Jersey Rebecca Phillips, Advanced Regents Diploma, Mastery in Math and Science. Darren Nicholas Paduski, Regents Diploma. John Flu, Regents Diploma. Zach Flew, Advanced Regents with Honors, Mastery in Math and Science. technical education. Yeah. Noah Radecki, Advanced Regents Diploma, Mastery in Math and Science. Jason Reamer, Skills and Achievement Commencement Credential, Regents Diploma. John Reamer, Career in Technical Education, Regents Diploma. Justin Reeder, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education, National Technical Honor Society. Jade Rendell, Regents Diploma. Marciana Roganti, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Riley Rogowski, Advanced Regents Diploma.
Sarah Rowling, Advanced Regents with Honors, Mastery in Science. Dylan Rozier, Regents Diploma. Kirsten Rybat, Advanced Regents Diploma. Almanthar Sala, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education, National Technical Honor Society. Mohammed Salaj, Regents Diploma. Brooke Schaefer, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. Seeley, Regents Diploma. Nathan Sisti, Advanced Regents Diploma. Sushana Sambansa, Advanced Regents Diploma, Mastery in Science. <laughs> Layla Stoddard, Advanced Regents Diploma. Stuber, Advanced Regents with Honors, Mastery in Science. <laughs> Jillian Zaccone, Advanced Regents Diploma. Olivia Thornton, Advanced Regents Diploma, Career in Technical Education, and Mastery in Science. Yay! Zachary Tomage, Advanced Regents and Honors, Mastery in Science. Mitchell Benelli, 
Advanced Regents Diploma, Mastery in Math. Christopher Ventress, Advanced Regents Diploma. Jacob Waitera, Advanced Regents Diploma. Leah Weindel, Regents Diploma, Career and Technical Education. <laughs> Bradley Williams, Advanced Regents Diploma. Regents Diploma. Jake Winkle, Advanced Regents Diploma. Zaylor, Regents Diploma. <laughs> KJ Zelazinski, Advanced Regents with Honors, Masters in Math and Science. Zilka, Advanced Regents Diploma. Sean Zolkowski, Regents Diploma. Advanced Regents Diploma. Yay! There you go, Colin! Yay! Caitlin Rachel Sotero, Regents Diploma. Yay.
Miss Sarah Rowling, who is ranked third in her class, to give the benediction to the class of 2020. Good evening. We are thankful for the support of parents, teachers, and the strength and courage that has allowed us to arrive at this point in our lives. Thank you to the grandparents, friends, mentors, and coaches who have helped us down the right path and encouraged us to never give up. As we age, also help us to remember our fondest moments as the DePue High School's class of 2020. I wish you all a future filled with prosperity, passion, happiness, and wisdom. Thank you. We are near the end of the ceremony, but before we do, I would like to thank all of you for sharing this very special evening with us and supporting our efforts during this difficult time. This class has proven that not even a pandemic can prevent them from celebrating this special event. Graduates, you have one more official act to perform. Students on stage, please join me. Class of 2020, I'm going to request that you now stand, and at this time, Please take your tassel and move it from the right side to the left side to signify your new honor. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you the distinguished class of 2020. Class of 2020. A class that has soared over many hurdles. A class that has persisted through the unthinkable. Born in the wake of 9 11, they have no memory of the world we before that. We entered elementary school. After the Boston Marathon bombing. And then we entered high school. And went through half our senior year in a pandemic causing us to miss out on many senior milestones. We are athletes, musicians, artists, scholars, technology driven, and leaders, but most importantly, and we are senior strong. <laughs> we grew up enjoying movies like Star Wars, Finding Nemo. And our classic TV shows include Forged in Fire. That's a Raven on Disney Channel. And as a Depew family, we made memories like Bollies. Powder Puff, Rain or Shine. Mr. Depew. Friday Night Lights. Rivalry Games. Grosso runs and musical. Band and chorus trips. Motorcade. Bonfire. Senior nights. Hunger games. Bus rides to away games. Designing and creating the wall. Car shows. Therapy dogs. Tech week. Map ball. Banquets. Trebuchet. The senior class trip. There. Rainbows always appear after the rain. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. We need to keep in mind that we've always had the power to do the unthinkable. Because just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. We are still making special memories. and leaving us with stories to tell.
assist. Police officer. Pilot. Nurse. An architect. Actor. Together we can. Conquer all failures. Conquer all failures. We've gotten stronger as individuals. And as a group. So thank you all. For the memories and the laughs. And learn. And develop into who we are today. Thank you to our teachers. Thank you to our parents. Our mentors. Our friends. Our families. And everyone who helped us along the way. You made this possible. The hardest things to say in life. Our hello for the first time. And goodbye for the last. But we will forever be connected. Because we are. And always will be. The class of 2020. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life jump you don't feel the fall hope when the water rises you build a wall hope when the crowd screams out you're screaming your name 
Hope if everybody runs, you choose to stay. Hope that you fall in love and it hurts so bad.
always knew this day would come We'd be standing one by one With our future in our hands So many dreams, so many plans I always knew after all these years There'd be laughter, there'd be tears But never thought I'd walk away With so much joy, but so much pride Oh